the agent world, but we're going to talk about representation in the agent world. And uh, to me, it's one of our exciting, all the panels have been great. I like this one. And I remind all of you, one relationship creates your own agency and one relationship leads to others to build your own business from an entrepreneurial standpoint. We have about 200 agent advisors around the world. My dream someday is the student from Nigeria that weighs 300 pounds and may not play soccer, plays NFL football, or the NFL player too small to play uh, in the NFL, but very fast can play rugby. And I really see a, a revolution going on of what I call cross-pollination of talent discovery. So let's introduce these two. They, we've already given them an introduction, but Sky, we're gonna start with you, and it's really a privilege to have you on our faculty, but also more importantly, we need your story. A lot of it's in the book, but kind of from the high school on, give us that uh, five minute navigation to where you are today. And then we'll go to John and then we'll, I have plenty of questions. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name's Sky, as most of you probably know by now because you've got a book of you. Yeah? Wave your books in the air like you just don't care. Um, so, <laughs> John knows it. Every time we do a course, I'm always mentioning the book. So I mean, my story is quite simple. I was at school. And um, a guy used to come around on a bike and teach us table tennis now. I'm a, I'm a great believer in people taking a natural path. You, you can't force a path, it's a natural path. So who would have thought that I would have started playing ping pong at table tennis, ping, well, table tennis, yeah, some people call it ping pong, it's an insult. Um, <laughs> table tennis at 14, then you know, at 12, 13, then 14, 15, I was playing for the county. 16, I'm playing for England. 19, I failed my A-levels and playing professional table tennis. And then I started traveling the world and realized that table tennis was a minority sport. And so you couldn't be, you couldn't have a minority attitude and you couldn't be a minority personality. So what I used to do, I used to write to um, journalists and sponsors and all sorts. I started learning the technique of understanding the language and what it is is that you just got to understand the language in whatever environment you're in it's just the language and if you speak Chinese to someone and they can't speak Chinese then they're not gonna understand you so I started to learn that for instance Pringle jumpers what relevance has Pringle jumpers got to a table tennis player well I wrote a letter to Pringle jumpers with pictures of me with medals around my neck saying that if you sponsor me I'll wear Pringle jumpers. <laughs> and they sent me some jumpers, believe it or not. And um, I wrote to airlines and, and stuff anyway. So 1988 Olympics, um, me and Linford Christie was talking and Linford used to say to me, phone up this company and see if you can get, get me a car and get one for yourself. And I'd phone up the company and go, I want a car for Linford and I want one for myself. And they'll say, we're gonna give a car to Linford and we're not gonna give you anything. So, um, and then it sort of developed from there. In 1995, um, uh, I was at Lillyshaw National Sports Centre with the National Table Tennis Team, and I met Sol Campbell. We were friends, and he wanted someone he could trust to represent him. And my background of simple things like learning how to type, learning how to send out letters to companies, communicating with journalists. I'll tell you one quick funny story. When I talk about speaking a language, when you read a newspaper, they speak a certain language. So when they go, player signs deal worth £200,000 a week, that player is actually earning £70 a week, and if he lands on the moon, he gets 200 right? So I signed this contract with this, with this company called Stiga, and it was £3,000 a year basic, but if I won the Olympics and the World Championships, I'd get 100000 so the newspapers did a deal, um, did a story saying table tennis player signs contract worth 100,000. Well, all my teammates went crazy. 100,000, you're not getting 100,000. And I, I found myself standing in front of them saying, yeah, but it's worth 100,000. That's rubbish. You're only getting 3,000. So that's what I'm talking about. You know, understanding the language, the language of the agent's business, the language of football, the language of the environment. And I think that's what I've done. I've learned the language all the way along. And so that's why 20 years in the business.